welcome welcome everyone i am subhashish chandra and i welcome you to the continuation of our story the story of atom in the last part we had seen the journey of the atom from a philosophical point of view to an experimental one we had seen our first two particles electron and proton we had also seen a rudimentary model of the atom let's take the journey forward now we will shift to the theoretical aspects of the atom the man who looked into it theoretically and gave a model was niels bohr he was influenced by ernest rutherford albert einstein and max planck so he improved the planetary rutherford model by using quantum physical interpretations like the planck theory of radiation the rydberg formula for spectral lines of atomic hydrogen couldn't be explained using rutherford atom as it showed different lines whereas for the planetary model it should have shown only one single line so bohr gave four postulates his first postulate was the electron revolves around the nucleus in circular orbits the orbit of the electron can take on the spatial value of the radii in these orbits the electron does not radiate these orbits are called stationary orbits so the electron if it stays in that orbit will not radiate that is the bohr atomic model next the third postulate was the energy of the atom has definite value in a given stationary orbit the electrons are allowed to jump from one stationary orbit to another if an electron jumps from an orbit of higher energy e2 to an orbit of lower energy e1 it will emit a photon of radiation having frequency nu which is given by this equation the famous equation you must have seen in the stationary orbits the angular momentum of the electron about the nucleus is always integral multiple of planck's constant divided by q pi that is h cross that is the angular momentum is quantized this is called the bohr's quantization rule bohr received the nobel prize in 1922 for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and of the radiation emanating from them bohr was such an important person that when the world war 2 started he was one of the first to be evacuated from copenhagen he was also one of the chief architects of the nuclear bomb or the project as it is popularly known as the manhattan project next guy is this guy alvin schrodinger he was an austrian physicist and is popularly known for his schrodinger cat thought experiment well we are not going to look into the schrodinger's cat thought experiment but you might look into it it's a very interesting thought experiment we will look what he did for the wave theory or the atomic theory sorry he is so uh, famous with his wave theory that uh, it just slipped out of my mouth schrodinger theorized that waves can be used to describe electrons in atoms this model depicts the floating motion of the electrons rather than them having a set path of travel so bohr's orbits were fixed he said that they will have a floating motion he determined the probability location of electrons in atoms according to schrodinger electrons stuck in their orbits would set up standing waves he stated that the position of the electron is probable and not definite so we were moving from the fixed stationary orbits to orbits which are probable but not definite that is the orbit cannot be defined in a rigid way the distributions of these probabilities will form areas of space about the nucleus and these spaces were called the orbitals some of the orbitals are shown in the figure so uh, an orbital is basically a wave function describing the state of a single electron in an atom before we move to the atomic model that was uh, derived out of schrodinger's wave theory we have to look into another great scientist 
one of my favorites, Werner Heisenberg. Werner Heisenberg was a young scientist and one of the uh, biggest genius the world has ever seen. He was the proponent of the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle states that it is not possible to obtain precise values of both position and momentum of a particle at the same time. He determined that the only way to describe the location of an electron is through probability distribution. That is, you can give a probability of where the atom will be, not the exact place. Just that Schrodinger did it with wave theory, Heisenberg did it with mathematical models. This principle forms the basis of the electron cloud model. This is the quantum mechanical atomic model or the electron cloud model. On the left is a ground state atom and on the right is an excited state atom. The model is based on the theories of both Schrodinger and Heisenberg. The quantum mechanical model does not define the exact path of an electron but rather predicts the odds of the location of the electron. This model can be portrayed as a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud. Where the cloud is most dense, the probability of finding the electron is greatest and conversely, the electron is less likely to be in a less dense area of the cloud. That is, electron is somewhere around the proton, it is there, but we don't know where exactly it is. It is in a probability space. Heisenberg received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 1932 for the creation of quantum mechanics, the application of which has inter alia led to the discovery of the allotropic forms of hydrogen. Schrodinger also received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1933 with another genius Paul A. Dirac for the discovery of new productive forms of atomic theory. Now, the atom it seemed that it was complete. It had a positive charge, it had a negative charge. We know where the negative charge was, we know where the positive charge was. But there were few other experiments that were going on with the atom and they were not consistent with the atomic model. The atomic model was not able to justify these answers. In 1930, German physicist Walter Bothe and Herbert Becker found that the alpha particles emitted from polonium when bombarded on beryllium produces an uncharged radiation which has energy enough to penetrate lead. This couldn't be explained using the existing atomic model. In 1932, Irene and Frederick Joliot Curie discovered that the radiation could knock out protons of energy 5.7 MeV out of a paraffin slab. That was a huge energy. They assumed this unknown radiation to be that of gamma rays. So the gamma rays was supposed to be having energy of about 55 MeV, but that kind of an energy was not possible from interaction of alpha particles with beryllium. At that time, a young Italian physicist, Ettore Majorana, suggested that the radiation could be composed of a new neutral particle and it was coming from the atom. One fellow who jumped into it was this gentleman from England, James Chadwick. Assisted by Norman Feeder, Chadwick quickly performed a series of experiments showing that the gamma ray hypothesis was not possible. He instead proposed that neutral particles with the same mass as the proton are responsible. In this case, an energy of 5.6 MeV is required, which is possible. The chargeless particle having mass nearly equal to the proton was called as neutron. James Chadwick received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 1935 for the discovery of the neutron. James Chadwick was the student of Ernest Rutherford. So J.J. Thompson discovered electron. His student Ernest Rutherford discovered proton. And James Chadwick, the student of Ernest Rutherford, discovered neutron. So, we arrive at this atomic model. 
the protons and neutrons forming the nucleus and an electron cloud around it. We may say that we have arrived at the end, but I would say it is just the beginning. As one of my friends used to say, if there is a book of particles, proton, neutron and electron will just form the first three pages. There will be lot many pages to read after that. I would suggest that you go and read a lot about the other nuclear particles. You might have heard about mesons, muons, taons. You might have heard about quarks. Read about them. The bosons. The other bosons like the W boson, the Z boson. Even the famous Higgs boson. I would suggest you read. You read, you try to know because at the end of the tunnel there is always light and that is the light which we strive for. And in due course you might receive one of the most important and coveted awards of your life. If you do great in your life in the fields of physics and chemistry, this is the coveted prize, the Nobel Prize. As you might have seen from J.J. Thompson to Jamie Chartwick. All have received Nobel Prizes. There are so many other people who have received them. That is one of the biggest awards. It is one of the biggest encouragements you can have. So, read and read as much as you can. Try to understand as much as you can. Stay healthy, stay safe. Till the next video, thank you.